match these three circles over here are functions. Now what's going to happen is this function is going to execute. And when that's done, it's going to move on to the next. And when that's done, it's going to move on to the next. When that's done, it's going to move on to the next. And the pattern just keeps going. With asynchronous, what's going to happen is, let's say you have this function running. And it's going over to the back end to fetch some data. Say data. And it takes, let's say, a few milliseconds for that to complete. The program is not going to wait for that to finish. It's just going to go over here, get that done, get that done. It's not going to wait for it. And then later on, when that data is readily available, then it'll be ready and complete. Now, this could be problematic because there are times when we have a variable in here and this function that needs the value that is coming from this function. And what's going to happen if you're doing it async and you have a dependency over here, it's going to, you know, bring about undefined variables and errors, bugs, because, you know, it's not ready yet with the data that we want. So that's where async await comes in. What it's going to do is, you know, you have your promise and you add await over here. Await to your function. All right. Okay. Wait. What's going to happen is when this function is executing and getting data, it's going to await or wait for that data. And then when that's done, it's going to move forward and pass it along over here. And then when this is done executing, it's going to move forward and the pattern keeps going. So that's what JavaScript is trying to achieve with async await. It's just trying to make it so that your code can be much more synchronous and that you have complete control over the order of operations. So let's get into it and let me show you guys an example of synchronous programming. So right here you have me saying for function number one, Hadouken, and for function number two, Shoryuken. So it's going to go where it's function number one first and then two second, right? So let's just see that in action. Hadouken, Shoryuken. Okay, just like we thought it would be. So it looks like it's running synchronously, but it's really not. So let's set a set timeout over here. So now that that set timeout is there, we have to ask ourselves, is this going to run first after five seconds and then run number two, or is two going to fire way before one? Now, if you pick the second option, then you're right. So let's just see this in action. As you can see, it ran Shoryuken first, and then Hadouken second, after that five second mark. So there it is, it's running asynchronously. So the way that we fix this is we use async and await. So in this example, we have a function called ryuseGift, which is returning a promise, right? Now, we haven't gone through promises yet, but you want to kind of think of them as a promise to return you something. And in the real world, you would see that when you're making a call to the database and the JavaScript is returning you that data. And when it's done, it will resolve, aka return that to you, right? So in this case, it's returning Hadouken after five seconds. Okay, so here we also have our message function, which is where we're going to execute all that asynchronous slash turning it into synchronous code, right? And it's important to note that we have this keyword async over here. It's very important that you have that at the start of your function, because if you don't have that, you won't be given the ability to use await, which is what is needed for us to make sure that this runs synchronously. Okay, so as you can see here, we have Ryu's gift, right? And it's gonna be stored into message, whatever is resolved, whatever is returned from Ryu's gift. And then after that is done, it'll continue on, the program will continue on to execute 
this code block right here. And it will console.log out message, right? So it's doing it sequentially. So this first, when it's done, console log that out. And that's what I was saying in the earlier video, how you may have dependencies in the next code block where, you know, a variable is needed for this to fully execute, right? If we didn't have this async await over here, it would just run through this whole thing. And when it gets the message, because that will be faster than this, it will just say message and then promise, right? But it won't really tell you what that value is. Okay, so let's run this so you guys can see it in real time how it looks. Let's wait five seconds. And as you can see, there it is. It came out with the message Hadouken. And if we didn't have that, it would just say promise. You know what? Let's show you guys how it looks. So as you can see, it just went straight into the console.log message with the promise. Doesn't really tell you what's in there because it didn't wait long enough for us to receive that message and then console log it.